Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So I'm on Hertford Street in London, outside uh, General John Burgoyne's house. It's spelt Hertford Street, but pronounced Hartford. Um, so as you can see, he was rather wealthy. to have such a large house in uh, Mayfair, which is one of those desirable areas of London. Um, anyhow, so Burgoyne is best known for having done more to advance the American Revolution than perhaps anyone in the in the Continental Army. Uh, he wasn't intending to assist the American Revolution, but um, by his uh, poor decision-making, that was the effect it had. Anyhow, so Burgoyne was um, uh, born in this country in 1722 in um, oh, Bedfordshire, if I got that right. Um, so his mother was from a wealthy merchant family. There is a dispute over his paternity. Anyway, he took his mother's maiden name as his name, Burgoyne. They'd come over from, from Normandy, we were in the Conqueror in 1066, but the surname uh, relates to Bourgogne, or Burgundy, which is in eastern France. Um, anyhow, he went to Westminster School, which was, oh, and it still is, regarded as one of the best schools uh, in the kingdom. Thomas Gage was a contemporary of his there, who was also an army officer who served uh, in America at the time of the Revolution. Um, so uh, Burgoyne then, he purchased a commission in a regiment, I think one of the um, lifeguard regiments, as in a cavalry regiment. So you actually buy your commission from the late from the late 17th century right up into the late um, 19th century. I know it seems like a crazy system, but it produced, uh, well, very mixed results, as we can see. Um, so he gave that up, after a while he sold on his commission, um, uh, um, because he, he, he eloped with um, the Earl of Derby's daughter, who totally disapproved of this marriage and refused to give any dowry. So he, li he lived off that, that money, but uh, he eventually returned to the colours at the time of the, um, uh, the War of Spanish Succession, where they desperately needed people back. Um, so he was in the army on and off. He was also a playwright, which might seem an unusual sideline for an army officer, um, and often writing about military themes like uh, the camp. Uh, anyway, he returned to, uh, to the, uh, America and was fighting there at the time of the revolution in the very north, coming down from Canada, and he made a very slow advance. There wasn't sufficient coordination between him and some of the other British units. Many people uh, blame Lord German, the, the, the Secretary of State for War, for this, but he was so far away for a ship to cross the Atlantic then would take six weeks easily. I mean, for letters to get back and forth was, was taking months. So he couldn't uh, micromanage the decision. These, these um, army officers had a very wide degree of latitude. But anyway, he uh, managed to get himself surrounded by the Continental Army, and he surrendered over 5,000 of his men. So it was a calamity for the British Army. 5,000 might not sound that much, but considering how small the population was, how small the British Army was, 5,000 was huge. Um, bear in mind the population of the 13 colony was, was three and a half million. Um, so, but it was a conditional surrender that his, his men would then be allowed to sail to Europe and take no further fighting, part, part of fighting on, on that continent. However, um, the, the, uh, the, those who captured him, they, they reneged on their promises and they was held prisoner for several years eventually released in 1782. He was a member of parliament at the same time, and being a serving officer, even a regular officer, even in peacetime, and being a member of parliament was considered compatible. It wouldn't be considered compatible um, now. If you even adopted as a parliamentary candidate, you must leave the armed forces, because that would seem to be impair the, um, uh, the, neut the neutrality of the military. Um, so he returned to this country, um, and wrote about his experiences. He had tended towards the Tory party um, because parties had a completely informal existence. Nobody actually joined one as such. So Tory was anybody who called himself a Tory. But uh, then uh, he uh, seemed to lean towards the Whigs and uh, criticising the government's handling of the situation in America and, and seemed to have no objection to, to uh, peace being made. So Saratoga was a battle always defeated, which was uh, possibly um, the key moment in the American Revolution. Up until that time, not many people in Europe believed the American Revolution could succeed. After that was a serious prospect and led directly to, the, to France declaring war on the United Kingdom next year. So it was October 1777 when he capitulated, but he was castigated in some quarters. Some have regarded him as a poltroon. He'd been a gambler um, earlier in life and his wages had brought him near to bankruptcy. He'd been borrowing debts he found very difficult to repay. Um, but um, as a military commander, he wasn't always uh, so incautious. In fact, he's often criticized being too circumspect and slow in his advance from uh, Canada. Um, so he lived in this house here. Um, 
and indeed this is where he died. I'm not sure where he's buried. And Richard Brinsley Sheridan lived in the same house, the celebrated Irish playwright. Well, so two playwrights living in the same house, but not at the same time. Um, Burgoyne, or Gentleman Johnny, some called him, um, thought that he was unserious, uh, he was uh, too flashy, a dandy, and all the rest of it, a playboy, um, the archetypal unsuitable British Army officer uh, that I'm afraid of, was, was too common in the era. Um, anything else about Burgoyne? Yeah, I think he managed to have no children with his wife. He had four with his mistress, and he could have married his mistress after his wife died, but he chose not to. That is enough about Burgoyne. Toodaloo.